Now I want to start off this video by saying that I am really loving this Brawl Stars update and I'm really excited about the future of the game. It's in a good place. With that said, I do have some concerns about some Brawl Stars and I'm going to be sharing some complaints in this video. So for this 100% honest review of the update, I'm going to start off by talking about my major concerns, get them out of the way. Then we'll talk about all the good stuff that happened with the update. And at the end of the video, I'll rate the update from one being the worst to 10 being the best. Now to start off with this big major complaint that I have is it, it actually stems from the fact that I I really love one side of Brawl Stars, and that is Power League. I love it so much, it's pretty much all I played last season. And because I pretty much only played Power League last season, I focus on mostly playing the best brawlers throughout the season because, you know, if you want to do well in Power League, you got to play good brawlers. And because I only played brawlers if they were good on the map, by the end of the season, I had racked up so many quests for non-competitive brawlers that I couldn't even finish them all. And that led to me trying to grind out the remaining quests near the end of the season so that I wouldn't miss out on rewards. And that's where the big issue came from is the fact that at the end, I wasn't enjoying playing Brawl Stars. I just felt like I had to grind through quests that I didn't want to do because I just wanted to play Power League. And because I had been enjoying playing Brawl Stars, I would played Brawl Stars a lot over the last season but I had all these quests. And the goal wasn't to have fun. If the quest was to deal damage, my entire goal every match was just to deal damage. If the quest was to get kills, getting kills became my goal, and I didn't care about winning, scoring goals, picking up gems, or anything like that. Eventually, I realized that I just, I wasn't having fun, and I didn't want to waste my time playing Brawl Stars in a way that I did not enjoy. And for the first time ever, I finished the season without completing all of my quests. And for the first time in a long time, I was disappointed with my Brawl Stars experience. As somebody who creates a lot of videos about Brawl Stars, that's actually a really scary thought to me. I can't tell you how many games I have quit specifically because it started to feel like a grind. And if I'm feeling like Brawl Stars is a grind, there's a really good chance that many other people are feeling the same way. And I really think that Supercell needs to address this concern fast or it will lead to less playtime, more uninstalls, and we don't want that. Now, not everybody loves Power League like I do, and I'm actually seeing the opposite type of player being upset because of a similar situation. Obviously, I love Power League, and playing it enough to earn the exclusive skin purchase for me was fun. I liked that. That was enjoyable, but not everybody loves the competitive nature of Power League, and that means that grinding it out to get Jet Ski Jackie is really going to feel like a grind for a lot of people. 50 wins in Power League just to earn the option of buying Jet Ski Jackie? That is way too much, okay? And, and even after you get the option, you still have to spend 25,000 star points to buy the skin. Now, in order for you to be able to buy the season exclusive skin every season and get the star points from Power League, you have to climb clear up to Legendary 1. And to give you an idea of how hard that is, less than 100 players in the United States did that last season. Less than 100 players? That's not just 0.1%, that's like 0.01% of the players actually climbed high enough in Power League to be able to purchase Jet Ski Jackie. The requirements for the Power League skin is way too high, and I am convinced that it is creating a negative playing experience for a lot of players who feel the need to unlock the purchase option, but who also would prefer to spend their time playing on the ladder or on Map Maker. Here's the deal. I am okay with the game encouraging players to play game modes or brawlers that are not their favorite to an extent. I think it's good and I think it is healthy for the game to encourage players to try new things that they might eventually start really loving. But I think the way that the system is currently set up is creating a negative experience and it is not good for the long term health of Brawl Stars. And obviously, I have some suggestions on how to improve this. First of all, I think that players would really appreciate some flexibility with quests. I'd honestly love to be able to reroll one quest every day. It could be a random reroll, but I'd also really just prefer to be able to choose which brawler or game mode I could switch it to. Just one quest every day, right? And if I get on every single day and I choose to change one quest every single day, then I would still have some quests that I would have to do according to the way that the game wanted me to do. And maybe I wouldn't even use the reroll each day or something like that, right? This would allow players to complete more quests while playing how they would like. People who really like to play the map maker a lot could switch quests to brawlers that do well on cheese maps. Players like me, who play a lot of Power League, could switch to competitive brawlers for their quests. People who really don't like playing Siege could switch their quest to a Brawl Ball quest instead. This way players could feel rewarded for playing the way that they want to and would have a more positive playing experience. The second change that I think players would really appreciate is a much lower requirement for the Power League skin. You should not have to win 50 matches and then spend 25,000 star points to buy it. It's fine for people that like to play Power League, but for people that don't like to play Power League, it is way too much and honestly is going to lead to people being frustrated with the game. Either the requirement to unlock the per 
purchase option should be easier, or it should cost fewer star points. They could leave the required wins at 50, but decrease the cost to 10,000 star points. Or they could probably do something a little bit better. They could leave the cost of 25,000 star points and lower the required wins to 20 or maybe even 15. Honestly, I think that Super Shuttle should do a little bit of both. They should reduce the amount of required wins down to 30 and decrease the star point cost to 20,000. To be completely honest, I really like that there are skins in the game that are difficult to unlock. And I don't think that every player should be able to unlock every single skin. However, I would consider myself to be one of the top percentile when it comes to just like how much I play the game. And I didn't have enough time to get the, squ the skin and also complete all of my quests last season. There's just a little bit too much of the game that is preventing people from playing the way that they would like, and I think that the game would be better off if Supercell tackled these issues before they started really actually hurting the game. Okay, I can already tell you I've complained about this way too much, and honestly, there's a lot of really awesome stuff in this most recent update, so let's talk about my thoughts on the update, starting with, the, well, probably the most controversial topic, and that's Brawlers respawning with less ammo. Honestly, when I first heard about this change, I thought it was a terrible decision. I did not like it, and when the update first landed, it really felt like it was a mistake. <laughs> okay, now then Supercell did a quick fix. They made it so that you would now respawn with one ammo, and that feels way better. It feels honestly pretty good, right? The more that I think about it, the more I think that Brawl Stars really made the right call with this change. It was a risky call, and who knows, maybe they'll still revert it, but before the change, it was beneficial for you to just go and die against the Siege Bot on defense so you could respawn with full ammo and full health and then like take it out, right? There were also situations in Duo Showdown where it was more beneficial for you to die because your teammate could pick up a bunch of power cubes, become really, really strong, and then you would respawn and take advantage of your immunity shield so you could dive on the enemy team when you had some crazy super like from Crow or uh, like a big stun from Frank or something like that. It was also almost impossible to turn around matches in gem grab as well, and this change fixed a lot of those issues, makes it a little bit more valuable for you to get kills, which I think is good for the game. You should be rewarded for getting a kill. Brawl Ball was especially frustrating, at least personally for me, because you could kill one enemy, and if you killed the second enemy, and you killed the third enemy, and all of that happened within 10 seconds, they still have a completely solid defense because they're all backed with full ammo. Whereas now, if you kill three enemies within 10 seconds, like there's a good chance they're not gonna have the ammo, you're gonna be able to actually score a goal, and I like that. It's taking me a little bit of time to get used to. I think that Supercell made the right decision, and I'm really curious to know what you guys think about this, so let me know in the comment section below, especially after having played it where you just respawn with just one ammo instead of zero ammo. Next thing I wanted to talk about are the three, three new game modes this, this update? That's a lot of new game modes. And we've only had just a bit of a taste of what it is like to play because of the recent special challenges just randomly popped up. It was like, surprise. And honestly, these game modes are a lot of fun. Basket Brawl, like, is a blast. I would be shocked if it did not end up becoming a permanent mode because it's it's really fun. And it's also, like, kind of frustrating when you try to shoot a ball and the ball's just bouncing forever on the hoop. I don't know, maybe they'll make some adjustments. They'll make it a little bit easier for you to score a goal. But at the same time, I like the fact that scoring a goal in Basket Brawl is actually a skill that you have to get good at. I like that. And three-pointers are super hard, so that's really fun. I also really like Volley Brawl. I expect that it will become a permanent mode as well. I think that there's a chance that they'll need a, it'll need a little bit of tweaking. I don't know what the exact tweaking will need yet because I haven't played it very much, but there's there's something about Volley Brawl that just feels just a little bit off to me. I don't, I don't know what it is, but uh, after I play it some more against enemy players, I'm sure I'll be able to figure out what that feeling is. Either way though, it's a lot of fun. Gale in Volley Brawl is insanely good, just saying. Hold the trophy is a cool concept, and I'm not sure if it will become permanent or not. The way that Supercell does it, at least to my understanding, is that they look at the player rates and see how many people are playing these modes in comparison to other ones, and which one should we make permanent, and are they comparable to the play rates and the modes we currently have the game, what's our standard, and things like that. So they'll look at all three of these game modes, and whichever ones have the highest play rates are the most likely to become permanent in the game. And I could see hold the trophy being fun. I could also see it being kind of toxic with people like uh, camping right? You got two people camping and they find some broken strategy that's just like insanely hard to get past or something like that. Gale, once again, is super strong. He's actually really good in all three of the new modes. Either way, though, I think that people will like hold the trophy in all three of these modes more than Siege. I love Siege. I know not everybody loves Siege. I love it so much. So I think there's a really good chance that all three of these game modes will say. 
I'm interested to see if people will want present plunder to be back permanently and I know it's now known as trophy thieves so I I like it I like it a lot I feel like with knockout becoming permanent brawl stars is in a really good position I feel like with knockout becoming permanent and supercell adding four very <laughs> new temporary game modes into the game they are in a really good position where they will have a ton of fun new game modes that will rotate enough that people's attention will hold right but what I'm most excited about for these new game modes is how it will impact the map maker in the future. I think that the, in the next update or the update after that, Brawl Stars is going to add knockout to the map maker. And depending on how well these new game modes do, there is a very good chance that they'll add these other modes to the map maker as well. And then the addition of modifiers to the map maker tells me that Supercell has a big focus on allowing the community to create fun new game modes which is awesome. There are so many different things that Supercell can do when it comes to these modifiers. They could add a modifier where brawlers can shoot twice as far or a modifier where you only see brawlers a certain distance from you. They could add an infinite ammo modifier or an infinite super modifier. They could add a 10 times damage modifier where everybody just dies super fast or a ton times health modifier where everybody lives for a super long time and it's really hard to take them out. They could add a modifier that changes the size of brawlers to be bigger or smaller so they're either really hard to hit or really easy to hit. I, I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't be so fun, but there are so many different things that Brawl Stars could do with these modifiers. I cannot wait to see what they do with them, but then there are even more tiles that could be added to the game to make things even crazier. I think that eventually Supercell is going to have several more game modes in the map maker. They'll have more modifiers available to choose from and enough new tiles in the game that is going to lead to a massive map maker update where it will no longer be about making maps, but instead it will be about making new modes. They'll add a mode maker update someday in the future, I think. I've been hoping for this ever since we heard about the map maker, even before then. And I honestly think that that is Supercell's goal because as soon as the community can create their own modes, Brawl Stars will be in the perfect position to have endless amounts of content that the developers don't even have to work on themselves that will truly make Brawl Stars a game that people will play for years. This Brawl Stars update has me incredibly excited for the future of Brawl Stars, and we have not even finished covering everything, okay? Next, I want to talk about Buzz, then we'll talk about Griff. Buzz? Okay, first of all, he's insanely strong. He's really good, okay? <laughs> now we'll put that to the side. We'll wait for more people to unlock Buzz, then Supercell can nerf him, and uh, let's just talk about his, his concept. I love the idea of Star Park having a dinosaur-themed water park called Velocirapids. That's just awesome. The environment is awesome. Buzz's design is really great. I really thought that we'd be getting a brawler that could pull themselves to enemy brawlers, and I think that Buzz's design is just perfect for that. The artist really just did a fantastic job with this update, as always. Now, Griff is interesting. He's interesting. The Star Park gift shop trio is finished with Griff, but it is obvious that they are inspired by the Krusty Krab trio in SpongeBob. Griff is obsessed with money, like Mr. Krabs. Colette is obsessed with her job and is way too happy and ecstatic, just like SpongeBob. And then we have Edgar, who's depressed and hates life like, uh, like Squidward does, right? Honestly, that's hilarious. It really makes me want to know what other trios Brawl Stars has pulled from other media and stuff like that. And anyway, I, I'm, I'm excited about Griff. He's kind of fun. He's going to be like, he's kind of like a boring looking character to not, not, not that the artist did a bad job. The artist did a great, great job with him. Right. But he's just like, kind of like, okay, cool. He's got a cash register head. Right. And that's like pretty much it. But he, I think he is going to be a really strong. He does a lot of damage from a distance. Now let's talk about tanks being able to charge their super off of enemies. And then we'll give this update an overall rating okay wow uh so this is a big change and i love this change i feel like we've always called frank and el primo tanks but honestly it's just because they have the most hp in the game they're not really tanks in the traditional sense of most games where it's more beneficial for them to take damage than their teammates they don't like have damage reduction they don't deal damage back when they take damage like in some like mmos or classic rpgs or stuff like that they don't have higher defense they just had more health than other brawlers so we called them tanks but now it is more beneficial for an enemy to land their shot on a tank like el primo or frank than on one of their teammates because it actually charges up their super, which makes so much sense. And honestly, it's actually made tanks good, which is crazy because most of them have just been straight up bad for so long. 
And I think the El Primo, obviously, is a little bit too strong right now. He was kind of, the Supercell kept on buffing him and buffing him and buffing him. And we're like, I don't know what to do with him. Let's just give him crazy supercharge. And now he's way too strong. So obviously they're going to give him some nerfs. Like, right, I'm fine with, and I'll butt it even then. I'm fine with him having a little bit of time to shine because he's been so bad for so long. And I'm really excited to see how this change is going to impact the meta. But what I'm even more excited about is the fact that I feel like Supercell did this secret little thing where they added traits to the tanks. And you go to their brawler profile and it actually shows the trait. And there's like space for like two or three more traits to be added right there on the page. And all of the brawlers other than the tanks and Buzz actually have empty trait slots. A section where in the future they could have traits added onto their brawler profiles as well. And I feel like Supercell is going to add more traits in the future and for, definitely for future brawlers. And there might even be some of the current brawlers in the game that might get special traits added to them as well. And honestly, I think that there's a, a they, they've left it right there. Like, hey, this could happen in the future. Brawl Stars might get another layer of depth, which I would really like, but I don't know. We'll see. Now that I've covered most of what happened in this update, I'm going to rate this update from 1 to 10. But I wanted to remind you that my big complaints about Brawl Stars right now actually don't have very much to do with the most recent update and uh, have kind of a, a just a general sense of progression and what needs to be improved. And because of this, I'm giving this update a big fat 10 out of 10. The amount of content in this update is insane. Not only did we get two new brawlers we got three new game modes the return of a fourth new game mode new tiles in the map maker plus modifiers not to mention big changes to balance changes that might you know they might have been a little bit risky but i think will improve the game and that's not even everything i didn't even talk about the new skins or the 10 new second gadgets coming to the game or the fact that brawl stars is getting a punk band named the bad randoms we've had a mind-blowing amount of content in this update and it really has me excited for the future of the game and brawl stars man they are they are just setting the game up for success so well like i said i think the developers need to make some changes to power league skins and quests so that we can have more flexibility to play the way, the way that we want but the most recent brawl stars update was one of the biggest and most exciting updates that we have had in fact it might be the biggest update we've had but i want to know what you guys thought about this update okay so let me know in the comment section below subscribe for more brawl stars content and you can just watch more right now that this video is over don't forget to use code kairos in the brawl stars shop for now this is kairos time ticking by we will see you in brawl stars because the game's awesome <laughs>